welcome to the 27th election in American history. It was held on Tuesday, November 8, 1892. The presidency of Harrison had many key moments, but firstly, after the last election, four states gained statehood out west. Most noteworthy, the former territory of Dakota was split in half due to controversy over the location of the capital city. Furthermore, the Disability Pension Act passed and gave Civil War veterans pensions, becoming a big part of the government's budget. This would help disabled veterans and help the fighters of the war tremendously. Also, the Sherman Antitrust Act was another key act of this era, created by John Sherman, a popular law that tried to reduce monopoly power and trade. Sherman also created the Sherman Silver Act, which made the U.S. Treasury buy more silver to make the farmers content. More importantly, the McKinley Tariff Act came about. It raised tariffs of foreign goods to a record-breaking almost 50%. This tariff hike would collaterally affect Hawaii, making plantation owners angry, and the annexation of Hawaii would soon follow. Meanwhile, in Chile, the Baltimore crisis between America and Chile occurred. Two American sailors were killed by a Chilean mob following a civil dispute after a sailor spat on a picture of Arturo Pratt. With both nations on the verge of war, James G. Blaine, Secretary of State, stepped in and reduced tensions. Chile apologized, and war between Chile and America was averted. For progressive news from Wyoming, Wyoming becomes the first state to give women the right to vote in presidential elections and would be a major achievement for women's suffrage. And soon after, the momentum would spread nationwide. For the election, the Republicans' nominees for president were incumbent president Benjamin Harrison. Another nominee was Ohio Governor and former House Representative William McKinley. And lastly, former Secretary of State and 1884 nominee from Maine, James G. Blaine. While for Vice President, the main nominee was Minister to France, Whitelaw Reed. From New York, Vice President Morton was dropped after not getting well with Harrison chemistry-wise, meaning that Reed became the new running mate of President Harrison. For Democrats, their nominee for President was former former President Grover Cleveland, who was looking to get back to the White House. For Vice President, the main nominee were former House Representative from Illinois, Adley Stevenson, alongside former Indiana Governor Isaac P. Gray. The convention picked Adley Stevenson to help Cleveland win a non-consecutive second term. Furthermore, the People's Party, a major third party, was formed by farmers, civil rights, laborers, and more. They nominated well-known former Iowa House Representative James Weaver for President, with Virginia Attorney General James Field as Weaver's running mate. The People's Party and Weaver would have major support out west. Minor parties included the Prohibition Party, who nominated former Representative John Bidwell from California. The Socialist Labor Party and New Party nominated camera inventor from Massachusetts Simon Wing for President. The campaign trail at the start revolved around the tariff question. Cleveland denounced it and moderated to implement tariff reform. Democrats heavily attacked Harrison for the billion dollar Congress, while Harrison defended against these attacks as a win for the American people. But sadly, the campaign took a tragic turn after the death of First Lady Harrison. Soon after the news, all candidates stopped campaigning. And the winner was... Grover Cleveland won, becoming the 24th president in American history and became the first president to win a non-consecutive second term. Cleveland won with 277 electoral votes, with 46.02% of the vote, and Adley Stevenson became the 23rd vice president in American history. Benjamin Harrison got 145 electoral votes, with 43.01% of the vote, and James Weaver won a stunning 22 electoral votes and 8.51% percent in this election. The Prohibition Party and Bidwell got 2.24 percent, their best showing ever. And lastly, the Socialist Labor Party and Wing only won 0.18 percent of the vote. The election of 1892 saw the first time two incumbents were defeated in back-to-back -back elections, and Weaver became the only third-party nominee to win a state between 1864 and 1912. 
In the Senate, the Democrats won, winning 44 out of the 88 seats, one below the threshold. For the House, the Democrats won big, winning 213 seats, 34 over the threshold. Charles Crisp, a Southern Democrat from Georgia, stayed as the 33rd Speaker of the House. Cleveland took his oath of office on Saturday, March 4th, 1893. Cleveland, in his second inauguration, talked about equality under the law for all citizens. For the government to be responsible to its people, People and the economy. Grover would emphasize for there to be fiscal responsibility and the dangers against the economy by big spending and free silver. America and the voice of the common man was beginning to slowly be heard more and more. And thus the 27th election in American history came to an end. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for the next video.